So after finishing with the first two sections of the wasteland, today we shall start with the third section called as the fire sermon. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walad. And as you know, we have started with the discussion of the wasteland, a very, very important poem of the modernist era of 20th century, which talks about the terrors of World War I, the fractured identity of individuals, the lost identity of people around. That is what we shall know today. But today it will be too much about uh, disorientation related to sex, I'm telling you, okay? And how a person has to give up everything, basically his five senses, if he wants to attain salvation. That is what the fire sermon is all about, okay? Now, I have to tell you, the fire sermon is the longest section of the wasteland. So I have decided that in today's lecture, we will cover only the fire sermon. And in the next one, we will go on to the fourth and the fifth, fifth sections of the poem, okay? Easy. Let's start now, okay? The lines covered by the fire sermon section are 173 to 311. That's long. River Thames was full of litter during summer, which means this River Thames had empty bottles, cigarettes, and contraceptives, quote, are the testimony of summer nights, okay? But now, quote, the nymphs are departed, and so have the heirs of city directors, without leaving any addresses. What does this mean? It means that the son of the rich bankers who came around Thames, okay, for business, they did their business, they polluted Thames River because of their business. They also had their fun with these prostitutes. Here, nymphs are somewhere connected with these women, okay? But now the speaker says that the summer holidays are over. You know, these empty bottles, cigarettes and contraceptives which are found in River Thames are no more because summer holidays are over. These sons of rich businessmen, they have left. Their connection with the prostitutes is over. And they have left without any address, which means even if the prostitutes get pregnant, these men cannot be tracked down. Okay, that is how the fire sermon begins. Here, line from Edmund Spencer's poem, Prothalmian of 1596 is described. Okay, the line is from Edmund Spencer's poem, Sweet Thames, Flow softly till I end my song. Why Eliot says it like this, sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Now in Prothalamian, Edmund Spencer honors the holy union of marriage. Remember how beautifully he talks about the spiritual union between a man and a woman. But in Wasteland, oh, 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 there's a crack. Eliot mentions that love is cheap. It can be bought. That is why he talks about these nymphs. He talks about about the rich men. He talks about how the contraceptives, how everything is done around Thames River. The river is polluted and so are the mines. Okay. Now, after this, with a cold blast, you hear this word, the speaker shifts us from River Thames to a canal where he is fishing. Now, this fishing alludes to the Fisher King myth. Please remember these allusions, questions around them can come. Now the speaker remembers here about his brother's shipwreck and father's death. Again, here death by water, okay? So allusion to the Tempest by Shakespeare and death by water, which we have read about in the last sections. Please, if you haven't checked out my last video, I recommend kindly go and see so you will have more fun and more insight while listening to my video now. Now, quote again from the poem, a rat crept softly through the vegetation. So the rat is mentioned, which reminds us of the trenches of World War I, which were full of rats, right? The readers hear a car honking. Now from the rats, okay, first River Thames, then these rats, you know, then this uh, the song from Edmund Spencer's Prothalamian. Now we hear a honk of the car, okay? Somebody is coming. Who is this somebody? It is Sweeney. You should know who is Sweeney. Well, Sweeney is a modern caveman or a Neanderthal figure who we actually see in many of Iliad's poems, okay? So this Sweeney has come in a suit and he has come to meet a lady called Mrs. Porter. From what we assume, Mrs. Porter is a brothel owner. So do you understand why has Sweeney come to a brothel? 
Now, soda water is mentioned here. How? They're saying that the girls here in this brothel are washing their feet in soda water. This is taken from an Australian drinking song of that time. Okay. Now here, Eliot also alludes to John Day's poem called as Parliament of Bees, in which the following lines occur. Which lines occur in Parliament of Bees? Quote, when off the sudden listening, you shall hear a noise of horns and hunting, which shall bring Action to Diana in the spring. Understand the meaning of these lines, please. Action was a boy who was torn apart, killed by his own hounds. Why? Because he dared to peep at the naked body of a goddess called Goddess Diana while she was bathing. So what is Eliot trying to say here? He's saying that you know, during the mythological times, even if you gain sexual gratification only from the sight of looking at a woman, it was enough for you to die. It was enough for you to be killed. But crack, crack in wasteland. For Sweeney in the wasteland, a wallet full of money was enough for more than just gazing at a woman. He could do anything with that money in his wallet. Now, Eliot ends this passage by quoting from the French poet Verlaine's poem, Percival. The lines are line 202 in the poem. Et au ser voy de effort, chantant de la coupole. I don't know what does that, you know, pronounce like, but the meaning of it is, oh, the voice of children singing in the capola. Now, what is, is capola or cupola? It is basically a little round tower in a palace or in any other building, a little round tower. Now, what does it mean? Don't get confused. I'm coming back again to what I just said. In Arthurian legend, Parsival goes to find the Holy Grail. This Holy Grail can be found only by the pure and the chaste who has left all the temptations, the sexual temptations or the other temptations of the world, only that person can find the Holy Grail. So Percival must detach himself from all kinds of temptations if he is to find the Grail. But this seductive song of the children distracts him. So did you understand now the word? The cupola, oh, the voice of the children singing in the cupola, even that's a distraction. Next lines, look at the lines of the fire sermon, line number 203 onwards. Twit, 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 jib, 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 so rudely forced, Tiru. Do you remember something if you saw my last video? This is actually taken from the allusion is to Ovid's metamorphosis. It is the story from Greek mythology in which Philomela or Philomela was raped by her brother-in-law, Tereus. But the gods, they took pity on Philomela and she was turned into a nightingale, okay? So this is how she's coming out transforming into a nightingale from a woman, though she continues to accuse Tereus with these words. Jug, 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 twit, 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 twit. See, what is Ilya trying to say here? Please connect it. Connect it with the confusion in the minds of people after World War, the distraction that people had, this gratification, this, you know, uh, sexual gratification just for money, just for fun, that became common. There was nothing called as true union or a spiritual union, okay? It talks about sexual violence here, right? Now, next, let's come to the poem, next lines. The speaker gets a very luscious or a sexual invite by Mr. Eugenides, a merchant from Turkey. Although Eliot again mixes something, you know, the past and the present, because the lines are, li listen to the line 209, Mr. Eugenides, the Smyrna merchant, unshaven with a pocket full of currants. But what does the speaker say? Mr. Eugenides, now Mr. Eugenides, actually, as I told you, Iliad mixes the past with the present. Smyrna was an ancient Greek city. And he says, Eugenides is from Turkey. So Eugenides is from Turkey, but he's coming from the Smyrna, like he's a Smyrna merchant. Iliad is confusing the facts here, okay? Don't get confused by this small thing. Let's, let's just continue. So what is Iliad saying? The speaker gets a luscious invite by Mr. Eugenides, a merchant from Turkey, but the speaker does not reveal what Mr. Eugenides say. But he only says that he turns down, down this offer. We assume that the speaker has turned down this luscious offer of a dirty weekend in Brighton. Let's move ahead with the poem, The Fire Sermon. 
Greek mythology is alluded to. In Greek mythology, Tiresias is a blind prophet and one of the first transgenders discussed in English poetry. Basically, gods condemned Tiresias or Tiresias to spend seven years of his life as a man, then the next seven as a woman, then the next seven as a man. That is how he was condemned by gods. So now Tiresias comes in, in the poem and he is describing in these tetrameter quatrains an unsatisfactory copulation or you understood copulation, right? An unsatisfactory sexual act between a female typist and her beau who's a clerk, basically her boyfriend. Now this ends with an allusion to Oliver Goldsmith's song from the Wicker of the Wakefield. This is a novel in which the daughter of the wicker gets alluded by a rakish character. Now understand the lines, the original lines from the wicker of the Wakefield are, when lovely woman stoops to folly and finds too late that men betray, what charm can soothe her melancholy, what art can wash her guilt away? Here they are saying that when this lady finds out that she's being cheated by this man, how can she get away with that guilt? Only death. Only death is the solution. Now, these lines are changed by Eliot in the fire sermon as follows. What was the scene described? The female typist having a very uninteresting sexual encounter with her beau. Now, listen to the lines after the sexual encounter is done with. When lovely woman stoops to folly and paces about her room again alone, she smooths her hair with automatic hand and puts a record on the gramophone. She does not think of death. She does not think of anything because uh, she's been cheated upon or this relationship will go anywhere. She does not care. After the act, she says, thank God it is done. He has left. She just, you know, ties her hair nicely and starts a song on the gramophone. From the female typist gramophone, the readers, that is we, are moved to the words uttered by Ferdinand and she in Shakespeare, The Tempest. So what lines do you hear now? Line number 257. This music crept by me upon the waters. But the music that Ferdinand talks about, that music is of the water, of the enchantment of water heard on the musical island, magical island. But Eliot denotes that Britain is an island that, that has lost its magic. Why? River Thames is sweating the stuff. Which stuff? The oil and the tar from industrialization. And then all of a sudden, fragmentation, distortion. We, I, I, we the readers, hear about Queen Elizabeth. Oh, 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 where is she coming from? The readers read about Queen Elizabeth whose reign was from 1558 to 1603, and her long casual sexual relationship with Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester. See, the poem shifts to the woman, okay? After Queen Elizabeth, you have to know this. Queen Elizabeth was called as the Virgin Queen, which means she never married, but she had this casual relationship with Robert Dudley. From here, we the readers are taken to those women who think that they will marry men, okay? So now the women who raised their knees, you understood for the act, the women who raised their knees and lay back and thought of England while in a canoe, the act happening in a canoe. Canoe is that small boat on the river. Listen to the lines. Richmond and Q undid me. Undid means, okay, remove my virginity. Undid me. By Richmond, I raised my knees, supine on the floor of a narrow canoe. Now, these voices run parallel with a song. Which song? Rhine Maidens from Wagner's Ring Cycle. We are la la, we are la la. Read the poem. You will really be able to make the connections what I'm saying. This brings us to the end of the fire sermon, the longest section of the poem, The Wasteland. The fire sermon ends with a quotation from St. Augustine's Confessions. The lines are 207. To Carthage, then I came. This returns us to two things. First, to the war between Rome and Carthage at Miley, which I mentioned in my last video in The Burial of the Dead. And this line also implies the rift between the spiritual and the physical. Because Augustine said, give me chastity and continence, O Lord, but not yet. What does that mean? Let me give way to my sensual passions first and then renounce it all. So what is the fire sermon all about? It refers to the Buddhist fire sermon, which teaches that liberation in this world is possible only through detachment of the five senses. 
See, when you read a poem, there are multiple, multiple ways of interpreting it. These are famous interpretations. When you read The Wasteland, you can have your own interpretation, right? Read it, enjoy the poem, love it. And in my next video, I shall come with the last two sections of The Wasteland. Thank you so much. This is Hina from Team Wallach. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.